I always tell people enough is enough because we don't have enough. I think being an entrepreneur in today's society, specifically for the black man, is, is, is not an accessory, it's a necessity. It's essential. It's the only way that we'll bridge the wealth gap in America. My name is Doug Falcon. I'm the founder of Cloudy Donut Company as well as Falcon Food Services. Cloudy Donut is a 100% vegan donut shop located in Brooklyn as well as two locations that we have in Baltimore and we also have a mobile unit a food truck that'll be going in and out of the DMV as well as New York as well. So what inspired me to become an entrepreneur was really never having nothing. I was born and raised in Baltimore and it's not easy growing up there. It's a real rough city. Um, I grew up extremely rough. People come to me sometimes and they ask me, well, how'd you come up with the donut shop? Or how'd you come up with the recipes for the restaurants and things like that? But it was really just from a sense of desperation. You know, like I always tell people, like I, it, it's no magic formula to poverty. You're born into it. Like no one asked for it, right? But uh, most people ask to get out of it. So my whole goal was like, how can I build something that's so dynamic that it can help me change my situation? And then how can I build it up so big where it not only changed my situation, but changed the situation of my family dynamic and other people could fit their goal underneath my goal. So we uh, actually came here during the pandemic. And when I say we, I mean, me and my partner OD2 Ruffin, because she, def she definitely is half of the brand. If it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be here right now. But we came here during the pandemic and we fell in love with the community, more specifically the aesthetics, the architecture. The shop works two ways. I handle the back of the house and she handles the front. Um, I deal with the production, the distribution, and she deals with the consumption side of things. We also wanted to make it look cool for black people, specifically black couples, to build together. Since she's come onto the brand, the Instagram has multiplied by four, I would say. And also the brand awareness has also multiplied, not to mention the customer service is A1. My name is Zoditu Jewel, and I am the Partnerships and Outreach Director here at Cloudy Donut Company, as well as the queen of the front of the house. You are, in Cloudy Donut, the first black-owned food and beverage business here in Brooklyn Heights. And today, we have transitioned from our fall and winter menu into the spring. We have featured today a pina colada donut that actually comes with rum in the glaze. It's one of our boozy donuts. We also have a creme brulee donut. It is a vegan Bavarian cream. We have passion fruit, pistachio, grapefruit mimosa, that is a real pipette of Prosecco champagne, and we have peanut butter and jelly. It is an all-time fave, 10 out of 10. You've got to try it. Finally, we have our cinnamon rolls, 100% vegan, of course. That is a brown butter glaze and an orange cream cinnamon roll. It is hard to find really good vegan desserts, but here at Cloudy Donut, we've got you covered. The location came from authentically being in a space of doing things that were true to who I was. So like, for example, like I came from, I come from the street energy, you know what I'm saying? When I was in the street, I was moving around, I was making money. So I always typically lived in like nice neighborhoods, right? And then when you move into more affluent, more educated neighborhoods, you see less and less black people, right? So I always believe in putting black faces in white spaces. How can we come into communities um, that are mostly affluent and mostly Caucasian and how can we, you know, add a splash of color and shake it up a little bit, you know, that's my thing. So how can I now provide people with a tremendous product or service all the while staying in the community? Because these are the communities that I would have stayed in before. Then another thing I want to talk to you about in terms of community and locality, because sometimes people say, well, what made you choose this, uh, this location over a black neighborhood, right? And for me, just speaking blunt, there are no black neighborhoods because we don't own the majority of anything in New York City. So a black neighborhood to me would be a neighborhood in which we own 100% or the majority of the real estate. You gotta realize that the majority of real estate are, are owned by white people, right? So like, it's, it's nothing wrong with a black face being in a white space. As a matter of fact, it's very progressive in the sense that it provides a level of reverse gentrification. So reverse gentrification to me is putting a black business into a white neighborhood, providing an outstanding product or service, and then creating a consumer base that can ignite a conversation about the social issues that we've always had problems with. So you gotta realize that when you think about black business, it's, it's typically synonymous with mom and pop. When you think about black big business, it's attached to white folks. Like Jay-Z's business, he has white partners. Puffy, they got white partners. So when black people start understanding that for us to get to the next level, it's gonna come with all kind of bullshit every day, that's when we gonna grasp it. I always tell people enough is enough because we don't have enough. Most of us are one generation away from being poor. Jay-Z, his parents was poor. Puff Daddy parents was poor. Master P parents was poor. That's gonna take a tremendous amount of work, 
a tremendous amount of unity and a tremendous amount of focus. Everything that we do is very fleeting is up to date. So we go out and we focus on ourselves. So it's a lot of black solopreneurs and there's nothing against them, but it won't progressively push the culture forward. So when you got the barber who just focus on himself and his business, when you got the beauty salon, the hairstylist that just focus on herself and her business, that's great. But now it's time to unify. So the biggest challenge for me is finding enough young black people that are humble enough to see an opportunity and willing to take a chance with someone outside themselves. I think being an entrepreneur in today's society, specifically for the black man, is, is, is not an accessory, it's a necessity. It's essential. It's the only way that we'll bridge the wealth gap in America. It's the only way that we'll, we'll provide our family with assets to be able to bequeath and leave behind. It's the only way we'll be able to employ our people. For quite some time, I've seen black talent contribute all their efforts towards white entities who haven't reciprocated or given them anything in return, right? And now we're in a space where a lot of black people are becoming entrepreneurs or what I would call solopreneurs. And now the next step after that is a level of uh, unity and collaboration amongst the culture. So that's the next thing for us. That's what we're excited about. If an individual wants to start a business, it doesn't have to be something that they love. It doesn't have to be something that they love. Like, we got to snap out of that. I started my business because I wanted to own something. I don't love making donuts, but it's a means. Until we understand that sometimes a means requires deep sacrifice of doing something that you don't want to do. Businesses are fleeting. You can build a business up and you can sell it off, right? So I don't agree when people say you have to love what you do. You have to love where you want to go and then you'll do whatever you have to do.